So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to machine that profile there. So that profile there, I'm trying to machine that onto this piece of bar stock. So I've cut this on the bandsaw and then what I need to do to it is I need to face that there. I need to face that side so those two sides are parallel and then do the same on this so I can get my effectively my stock material my starting point and the intention is of these I've got three of these and they're going to be a set of soft jaws so I need to machine that profile up there and I need to ensure well the test is to ensure that that accurately locates onto my chuck and that's going to be a bit of an issue with my 2.2 .2 kilowatt spindle which spins very very quick indeed and my questionable setup so there's not a lot of material to take off it's just got to basically do a slot mill through there take off some there and then bring all of this material away so it's not a huge amount of material but it's the tolerances and the intention is I'm gonna get this I'm gonna get my soft jaws and then I'm gonna mount this big bracket over here and I'll mount that onto the lathe and then I'm gonna machine this up. So, machine these up, machine them up on the lathe to actually get my final profile and then machine the bracket. So this sounds absolutely horrendous and I think part of the reason why is because I've got a dull colour but also because my bed decides or always resonates. It's a temporary bed, I'm going to change this eventually but um, there's this thin piece of aluminium underneath it which is supposed to be a coolant tray and it doesn't work because it just makes a racket. Then going forward though, I think smaller widths of cuts, faster feeds and maybe deeper depths of cuts then that's the key to actually having an overall faster operation here. So that's what I'd probably change. Cooling does help now and again. So service finish is actually quite good. Pretty happy with it. So I'm going for a helical ramp in over here. Um, I've had a lot of success with helical rampings. End mills don't like plunging straight into your material. Um, one thing I do need to do is probably improve my toolpath generation. I start up quite high, so it takes a while to actually contact the material. But um, all in all, I think I'm probably going to stick with these parameters. They work quite well. So the roughing pass went well, however I think next time I'm probably going to go for smaller width of cut, maybe deeper depth of cut, and I'm going to up the feed rate, I reckon that will probably suit my setup a bit better. However surface finish looks good and later on I think you'll probably see the tolerances came out alright. So over here I'm machining all of the reliefs and the mill actually just does a straight slot cut which it performs quite well actually. Um, definitely possible however I'd probably be moving to an adaptive toolpath rather than a straight slot mill. I also need to consider maybe using some bigger diameter cutters. Um, I use a 4 mil mainly because the speed my spindle can really get up to. It's not very good low down however at high speeds it works well. Smaller colours lend themselves to higher speeds.
So over here I'm doing the finish pass. Um, I've got it set to a 0.2 width of cut. I find this works quite well. Um, I have to go over the area a few times, so even at a 0.2mm width of cut, you're always going to have some sort of deflection, especially on a machine such as mine. So going over the area a couple of times, in my case three times, ensures that I'm able to take away most of the material. You want to get rid of most of your chips when you're doing this. Um, most of the time they'll probably find themselves sticking against a wall and then they're going to recut and then they're going to ruin your surface finish. So get rid of the chips, lubricate and do multiple passes. So over here I'm machining the pretension ring for the actual jewels themselves but um, I'm actually going in a little bit harder with this helical ramp in than previously. Thought I'd give it a go and as you can see it completely burns up so definitely not a good idea. I'm going back to my original parameters. So over here I'm doing in a toroidal toolpath again just to get out the outer diameter of this circle and um, essentially I'm a little bit too relaxed with my settings again. I thought I'll give it a go and see what happens. Um, the stages actually can accelerate at 1G and boy it's accelerating at 1G but it's also taking massive chunks out so it completely clearly shears its colour straight off. So again back to my original settings. So I'm doing this at the full depth of cut so that's 5 millimeters. Um, again it's a 4 mil cutter um, and the parameters I've given below, they work well, however it's extremely scary to stand by my machine while it's accelerating its stages like it is. Um, the cut actually came out really well, however if I'm doing this again I'm definitely going to be using a bigger diameter cutter because a 4mm cutter, it just, it's just scary watching this happen. Um, it's much more, I'm much more comfortable watching a 5 or 6mm cutter do the exact same thing. So I'm going in with a 7.5mm depth of cut over here, but I probably could go a little bit deeper because CNC didn't seem to have too much of an issue. This is an uncoated end mill. Um, a coated end mill would be better, but I actually destroyed all of them, so this is the only one I actually had available. Um, going forward, I probably will be using these parameters. I think the material removal rate is probably a bit better than the previous you know, sets of parameters. But also the chips. The chips are probably the best I've actually come across or with my setup. So I've finished up these parts, I've actually used them already, so they'll be mounted to the lathe, I've used it on my part, I've finished the machining ops on that. Um, measuring them all up, the tolerances are okay, by all means not perfect, using the vernier, they're about, well this is a requested half an inch, so I'm slightly off, well more or less so, there's a, there's a couple of burrs still on these parts, um, more or less so, however on some of the dimensions, such as the inside channel, should be about 8mm. Um, that one there, it's more or less 8mm. I've got this one over here, slightly under. And that one there, slightly over, just slightly. Nevertheless, usable. The surface finish came out really well. Um, but I wanted to really speak about cutters. Um, although these parts came out okay. Um, I had some issues with some of the colours I was using. So I was using some colours from Banggood and this is the colour that you saw me machine up these over here with and um, it was fine, like it was running. I suspect there was some wear with the colour because some of the dimensions are slightly off and it might be due to my machine most probably but it could also be the colour wearing because I've noticed the one that is slightly off is the last part I've machined. Um, but yeah, this colour worked more or less fine for my operation. I'd probably want to push it a little bit harder, um, but yeah, the flutes are all intact. They're still pretty sharp. You saw me break a cutter when I was actually machining um, this this disc, but that was partly my fault. That was partly my fault because I pushed the cutter a little bit too hard. It's a four mil cutter, so not a lot of meat. I then went ahead and machined that plate, the last little snippet I put in, and I used the exact same settings, not far off, and it absolutely destroyed the colours. It uh, came in and I mean, I, I got maybe like two or three inches and then um, yeah, goodbye. And the same thing happened with another cutter of the same type. So these cutters I got from Banggood, same with these cutters that I used beforehand. Um, <clears throat> and when you get them, they look absolutely fine. They actually look really good. They, um, I've got one over here actually. 
they're nice and sharp they're really nicely uh, ground um, but I suspect it might be a batch problem or maybe the material is not up to it because I used an uncoated just carbide cutter um, this is slightly of a higher quality I'm not sure where I actually purchased these from but um, I've used this I've used this particular color quite a lot it's also got a little bit of a rad on the on the edges which helps but no no problems same settings everything no problems with this color so I think there's a lot of videos out there with people pushing their machines non rigid setups actually machining metals and I think a lot of it comes down to the color you use if you're gonna use a cheap color like this you might well get really really bad results also when a line and the better quality colors are not that much they're not more expensive they're not that much more expensive you might be looking at maybe a couple of pounds per color so for me it was definitely worth it um obviously this being uncoated i actually did try to finish up a finish operation with this and it completely burnt up the actual side of the wall but the color came out fine but um that's the final comment i'd probably make i can't really measure up the dimensions of this partly because i hit the e-stop and i never reset the machine so i hit the e-stop it stops it in hardware and then effectively i can't well the software doesn't have enough time to react so um the tolerances on this on the actual circle itself are pretty poor nevertheless it's fine because i never actually used that for anything i was actually more concerned about these whole locations so that came out okay but yeah the parts are usable i'm happy with it i could probably push the machine up in different ways in the future and i've already spoken about that but um biggest takeaway is cutters make sure you buy a decent set of cutters actually one more thing to add chips um Chips are a really good indication of how good your machine is performing. And if you're going to use in a toroidal type toolpath, um, you still want long chips. You still want chips that are not like um, crumbs. They're not like dust. Uh, and effectively, the chips that you see now are blue in color, which means that it's taken away the heat from the actual cutter itself. I tend to find that actually when I spray the coolant on the actual cutter while it's cutting, if it's cutting correctly, there actually isn't that much heat build up. Um, I can actually more or less do the operation dry. But um, the chips themselves are a good indication of how well your parameters are actually set. Because you can see here, they're like long, stringy, and that they're, they're pretty much blue. They've taken away the heat of the actual cut. So use this as an indication to work out whether your actual parameters are more or less working for you. So I posted a picture of the bracket that I used, well, I use these jaws on. So the bracket in the background is a 14 kilo bracket, which I actually cast, so I've got a video on that. And I use the jaws that you saw me machine up in this video on that bracket. Um, a particular video that was particularly helpful for me um, was a video posted by Breaking Taps. So I posted the description in the, or I posted the link in the description down below. And um, yeah, he's got a list of parameters that work for him and they certainly were helpful for me. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, maybe give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. That's all for now. Thank you very much.